Hey everyone, today we'll be going over how to set up basic controller support for GUI inside Unity 3D. So this will work for any version of Unity higher than 5. So in order to check what version you're on, go to help, then about Unity. You can see I'm on Unity 5.2.0 F3, but it'll work with anything 5 point something. So if you look down at my assets, I have a few things already made. They aren't necessary, but they're just there to make the UE look a bit more appealing. So I have a couple of sprites to use as buttons, as well as a font, two scenes, and a script just to work our play button. If you look in the description of the video, there will be a link to download the starter files. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is go over to Create, UI and canvas. Now, as soon as you make a canvas, zoom out a bit really quick. Go. As soon as you make a canvas, it'll create a new object called an event system that has three scripts on it. There's only two scripts we're really looking at today for controllers. That's the event system and the standalone input module. Touch input module, we won't get into. So let's create some buttons. So go create, UI, and button. Let's center it, this middle of the screen, by going over to anchors, clicking this, holding Control, Alt, and Shift, you can set it right to the center. Now let's just get this button set up. We want to go into our GUI folder. We want to switch button translation over to sprite swap and just give it our two sprites. Now it'll look, it'll look a bit more appealing. The text on it. Now it's set up. So let's just position it to where we want. There. Now, if you look at the button script itself right here, it has a navigation tab to it. Now, this works with. Unity's built-in controller support. And you, just, you can uh, fool around with it. You can set it to be horizontal, vertical, automatic, or explicit. Uh, this option here will let you manually make where it will go on button press. But we, for this, we're just going to set it to automatic. So let's just duplicate this button a few times. And add that are different rights to it. All right, there we go. Test to make sure they're all working. There we go. So, first thing we want to do is go into our event system and look at the event systems first selected. Now, what this does will on scene load make one of the buttons or any UI element. This works with sliders, uh, toggle boxes, pretty much anything under here that can be selected will work in the first selected. So let's go and give it our play button. Right there. So what that does is when we start up the scene, play will automatically be selected. And we will not be able to switch it away with uh, the mouse anymore. So now we got all this set up. I'm just going to go to event system really quick and drag on this script. It's all it is is a GUI manager that just holds the function for the play button. So we add a script to it and give it its function. All this will do is just load the scene to the next one. All right, so let's get the controller support working. 
So make sure your controller is plugged in. If you're having some problems with it not reading your controller at first, try unplugging it and plugging it back in. Unity sometimes gets a little touchy with if your controller was in, plugged in before you started Unity. It's better to plug in your controller after Unity has already been started up. You'll get a little message in the corner there saying a controller has been plugged in. And it kind of gets rid of a lot of problems. Another problem people have with Unity and controllers is when they mix wireless controllers with wired controllers, that can create a lot of misunderstanding between what controller is pushing what button. And you can have some problems there. But other than that, if your controller is plugged in and working and all ready to go, should be good. So our first step we need to do is go into Edit, Project Step Settings, Input, and we need to add in some inputs that will look at our controller instead of a mouse and keyboard. Now, by default, Unity will have in some uh, some controller inputs. So horizontal will it work with the horizontal axis of the right of the left stick of a 360 controller. Vertical will go with the y axis of the left stick of a 360 controller. Fire one works with the A button. Fire 2 works with the B button, so on and so on. You can look at all of them here. Now, we are just going to add in two new, or just one more uh, control. Let's just show you how it works. So we're going to duplicate this one. because We're using the vertical D-pad. And with the with the D-pad, we want it to act the exact same as the left stick. So the way we do that is if two inputs share identical names, no matter which input is pressed, either with the left stick or the D-pad, it will trigger the input. Now, here's a quick website that will show you all what buttons are called, all the buttons on the controller, and what they're called, what axis they are, and how to use them. It's different if you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux. So make sure you use the according the right uh, controls. So let's look at Windows, because that's what I'm using. So this, the vertical axis of the D-pad is the seventh axis. This will, uh, I'll put a link in the description for this website. So let's go to the new control I made. Switch Y axis to the seventh axis. That should work with all. That should work with all controllers and their vertical D-pad. Now, when we go to the event system, we look at the standalone input module. Here's where you put in the different controls. So we're just going to use the default Unity controls for right now. So the horizontal will be access is looking for buttons that will work when you click left or right. Vertical is looking for up and down. The mid button is looking for when you want to enter something. So when you want to click on one of these buttons. Cancel is a control that's just looking for button a button that will be used to exit. Now we have input actions per second. This is how many inputs it will accept per second. And repeat delay is how long it will wait between inputs. So pretty much that's it. So if we start up our scene now and grab our controller, we would be able to switch between options. And that, there we go. Now, if it's not sensitive enough for you, you can just go into your controls and mess around with these three values. And that would pretty much just 
mess around with them until you get get a sensitivity that you like. And then you have a fully working GUI with with uh, a controller. So let's just get a button working really quick. So if we go to build settings, we have to add our scenes. I put the function on play before, so it should work. And there you go. You're done. Now, there is a few issues with the built-in control support for Unity. The major issue is that all controllers are treated as one. So no, many, no matter how many controllers you put in, it'll all melt it into one controller. Now, if you look over the event system, you can change these and give them like one single controller options. So if I go down the vertical, I change this from get motion from all joysticks to joystick one. It'll only get, it'll only take in controls from player one. But the problem is that there's only, you can only have one event system on a scene. So you can't put in multiple event systems looking for multiple controllers. If you want to have multiple people controlling various things in one scene, unfortunately the event system will not work for that. The event system is only for basic GUIs, like a main menu like this, and other things that require only one person interacting with something at a time. Now, multiple people can interact with this GUI at once, they just can't do different things. So thank you very much for watching today and I hope this helped. Have a great day.